have a niche um, who will be talking about Docker, but for data. Um, he's the co-founder and CTO at Quilt Data, uh, and as a y, uh, they're a Y Combinator company. Uh, prior to that, he was a uh, product manager and designer at Microsoft and Video Matterport. Um, and he has a bunch of interests in Python and like data science and a ton of other awesome stuff. So I'm really excited for his talk, and I'll turn it over to him. Hey, my name is Anish, and I'm one of the core contributors on an open source Python project called Quilt. And the idea behind Quilt is to create Docker, but for data. Well, the question is now, why would you want to do that? And let's think for a minute about how we develop modern applications. Well, we stand on the shoulders of giants. We go out and we get these high quality, reusable version building blocks from GitHub, from PIPI, from Docker Hub. And as a result, you can deploy and develop your applications much, much faster. So now the question becomes, what happens on the data side of things? And the answer is nothing. It's kind of like the Wild West for data, right? So you've got files scattered all over the internet in a variety of formats. You've got people emailing zip files around, different databases, different APIs, people sticking files on S3, and it's a mess. So what we're doing is we are promoting and creating an open source standard that we call the data package. And a data package is as many dependencies as you want to roll up into a metadata wrapper with serialized data on the inside. And here's the important thing. When you package your data, it becomes virtualized, which means that you, as a user, can now forget where the data is stored or what format that it's in. And I'm going to show you how this works in just a second. So I'm gonna run you through how Quilt works on the command line, and there are only three or four primitives that matter. You build your packages, you push them to a centralized registry, you install them from that registry, and you import your data into memory. I'm gonna show you how that works. So at a very high level, Quilt build is responsible for four things. So the first thing is it will use pandas to rip through the file system, shred all of the data like Excel files, CSV files, database tables, even images, if it can shred them into a data frame, it'll turn them into a data frame. We then take all of the individual data fragments, we hash them, and we stick them into something that looks like a Merkle tree or a hash tree. We'll talk about why in a second. And then all of the data that is columnar, we serialize that to a columnar on disk format. We currently use Apache Parquet. And the value there is that really fast to query, very small footprint on disk because it compresses really well and very fast to transport over the network. And the last thing we do is a little bit of indexing on the data. So we take all your files in any format and roll those up into a package. And now, so exciting, this is what it looks like when you actually build on the command line. So I took all the data from Wes McKinney's Python for Data Analysis book, and I did this quilt build a carve that's just my username slash pydatabook. And now you can see TQDM and Pandas do their magic, and they go and they rip through all your data on disk, and then they create this package for you. So now the question is, I created a package, I wanna share it, right? So the package is already this unit of data dependencies, right? Think about the way you get packages from PIPI with requirements txt. So I've got all my dependencies in there, and now I wanna make these dependencies available to other people. So the package is also a unit of permissions, and once you've built this package with your data compiler, the quote compiler, you can now push this to the registry. And there are a couple of pieces of that. So first is a permission check, how many Flask programmers do we have out there? Yay, so we do flasks to, to manage the endpoint and manage permissions. And because we have this hash tree implementation, we deduplicate all the data. What does that mean? If I just went from version 43 to version 44 of a one gigabyte package, but I only changed the readme, we want to be able to send you only the deltas. So that's the value of tracking everything in a hash tree is that all the data is deduplicated and we only send up or pull down the fragments that you don't have. And finally, we write it to blob storage. So it works in a decentralized way. Every client gets a signed URL and talks directly to blob storage. Okay, so you push the data. I know that's super small. Where does it go? Well, it goes into a catalog. And this catalog lives on the open internet. It's like PIPI, but for data with a way better, I hope, user interface. So upper left, you can see there's the readme file. Contents automatically generated by the data compiler. Upper right, that's how other people can use your data. And then lower right, that's the last person to touch the package and the new top hash. So that package has a unique identifying hash. Okay, great. So you create, you push your data into the catalog and now other people want to use it. How do they grab it? Well, they grab it with quilt install. Here again, there's a permissions check. Can this person read this data? We stream them the data that they don't have on their device and they read it from blob storage. But this is going somewhere. Okay, this is the big reveal. All right, so what we were going for is we want people who use data and who depend on data in their Python analysis to be able to forget about where that data is stored and what formats it's in. And this is the beauty of import. So from quilt.data.acarve, you can now 
import your data, right, from user namespace ACARV. This is the PyData book package. You can import your data the same way that you import code, right? The same way you would pull in like a PPI module. And boom, pb.titanic.train, and I get a data frame out the other end, right? There's no data munging, no files to deal with. Why are we doing all this? We're doing all this so we can make analysis reproducible, right? We've got a code hash from Git, a data hash from Quilt, a model hash from Quilt, and now anybody who wants to reproduce your analysis can get the same results. Uh, real quick, the stack is, the compiler is implemented in Pandas and PyArrow. It's Docker and Flask for the registry, React and Redux on the front end, where are we going? Next generation Jupyter, we're working on versioning models and data sets for TensorFlow and integration with the Hive Metastore so that we can talk to the Hadoop ecosystem. We talked about a lot. There's a long road ahead. We would love to have your help contributing to Quilt. Um, who are the core contributors? Any contributors from Quilt in the audience? Raise your hand. Come out and talk to us. We're Quilt Data on GitHub. Thank you.